everybody, Chris Musto, Guaranteed Rate. Um, I wanted to talk today about really how the pros value commercial property, income producing property. So I brought Chris Dumpke from Bridgewater Commercial. How are you doing? He's going to talk a little bit about, um, you hear a lot about cap rates mm -hmm. and, you know, what, what does that mean to an investor and how does, how does a pro pick a good property? Well, um, basically what they're looking at on a cap rate is what is the property going to give them as a return on their investment? Cap, cap rate um, is short for capitalization rate. So when you're looking at a cap rate, let's say you are buying a $150,000 property just for the sake of round numbers. So on a, and you're looking for an 8% cap rate. That means the that's prop an 8% return. Correct. Per, is that per year? Yeah, that's an 8% return annually um, on a $150,000 investment. Okay. So that would give you um, a net operating income of $12,000 per year. So basically you're paying $150,000 to get twelve thousand dollars per year, as well as you know, you've owned the property as well, and then you might have appreciated value of the property. Sure. So you're buying an asset that's throwing off a, a return on it, mm -hmm. and that's your cap rate, and that's right. after expenses. Right. Right. Generally, okay. and then depending on every buyer is going to have a different tolerance for what their expenses are. Maybe the person selling the property has a higher management cost because they're doing everything themselves and they only own one property. Where maybe an investor that already owns several properties is just adding to the portfolio. They already have the management in place, so that's more of a fixed cost for them. So then they might get a higher rate of return, higher cap rate on their investment compared to someone else who might be a, a relatively new commercial investor trying to start off their portfolio from the ground up. Got it. So how, how does somebody get started? Um, let's say someone wants to buy an income producing property, say, you know, a, a cluster of mm -hmm. apartments or a, a strip plaza. So what, what are they, what, how would you look at that property and determine if it's a good deal? <laughs> Um, well, first, I want to know what the net operating income is, and I want to, you know, evaluate my tolerance for the property um, t risk tolerance. Going back to we keep going back to cap rates. Mm -hmm. So, if it's um, let's say it's a great property in a great neighborhood, and I'm always going to have consistent tenants. And again, this goes back to retail, residential, office, industrial. We really look at the class of tenants. If it's you know a great tenant um, in a retail, for example, like a Starbucks that we know is going to be um, in business, you know that they're going to be paying the rent. Um, my risk tolerance might be a little lower. I don't necessarily need a high, high return on that kind of investment because I know the money is almost guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, where if it was like a small startup mom and pop coffee shop, um, we, their track record isn't proven yet. I want a higher rate of return as an investor to have that tenant in my property. So, you know, my cap rate that I would look for might be as high as a nine or a 10, depending on the type of property. Sure. Um, so then by that example, if it's a nine or 10% cap rate, I'm going to be paying less for the property to get, you know, in theory, what would be the same return where a Starbucks, I'd pay a lot more for the property to get the same return because I know that money coming in every month is going to be guaranteed. It's more certain. Right. Okay. Okay. And then a higher, a higher cap rate, is going to yield um, a higher return or a lower return? So a higher cap rate is going to yield me a higher return on my investment. Right. So for example, let's say for round numbers, you purchase property for $100,000 and it's a 10 cap. That means you're getting 10%, so $10,000 annually on your $100,000 investment. So um, a five cap is just that, $5,000 of, of income on a $100,000 investment. All right, great. And then you were talking about before cash on cash is mm -hmm. something that you guys use. Now this is where leverage can really come in, correct? Yeah, this is where we'd want to sit down um, with a lender, maybe like yourself and also the client and really go through and figure out um, how much they want to leverage on a property. And we'd sit down and kind of go through the calculations. But basically, if you know maybe they're charging four to 5% on an interest rate, you can speak a little bit more about where interest rates are today. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm getting 8% return with my cap rate, then there's a you know three to 4% 
profit that I'm kind of getting based on the cost of the money. Um, so I might only put down $20,000 on a $100,000 property, and then I'm still making money on the $80,000 that is leveraged by a lender like yourself. Right. But that's, that's a little bit more into the nitty gritty. We really sit, like to sit down with our clients and kind of go over it on paper and do it a full analysis to kind of figure out where the percent return on their initial cash investment would be. Great. So when looking at a property, mm -hmm. you guys, you're going to look at the cap rate mm -hmm. and what's the return on, on investment. Right. Higher is usually better, but I guess depending on the risk profile. Higher cap rate is better um, for the purchaser, but again, it, it all goes down to risk because it's going to be a little bit riskier of an investment when you get into the higher cap rates. Got it. Okay. So so cap rate, you're going to look at how much you can make um, based on your actual cash investment if mm -hmm. there's finance or leverage involved. Mm -hmm. And then how about location? How important is location in the commercial world? Well, the three rules of real estate are location, 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 as you know. So, um, but in commercial real estate, it, it matters a lot, um, especially if the property has high vacancy rates, you really wanna look at what the market is bringing in that area, you know? And again, these same principles apply whether you're looking at an apartment complex, a single family home as an investment, maybe an entire shopping center, you know? Are all the spaces in good condition? If could, would it be easy to add tenants back to the building if your existing tenants moved out? Mm -hmm. How much are they gonna be willing to pay in rent? Are the rents that they're paying now above market or are they below market? Um, and those are the things you want. You wanna make sure that you reflect your purchase price depending on where they are now, the potential for rent increases. Maybe, like I said, maybe everybody's overpaying for rent. So you gotta kind of kind of mentally budget for that and really do a in-depth analysis on the property and the location, which is again, where we can come in and help guide our clients to make sure they're making the right decision. Yep, very good. So there you have it. There's a little bit about investing in commercial real estate. If any of you guys have more questions, get with Chris. Uh, his contact information will be located right around here somewhere, probably down there. <laughs> All right. And um, Chris, thanks so much for being with us. All right. Thank you. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you.